Story. The Virgin Ghost. Lin was my age. Back then, she was the most beautiful young girl in the Bamboo Village Village. Every night, boys from neighboring villages would come to court her. On nights when the boys came to visit, she would escape to my house to sell pickled plums until she heard the sound of dogs barking outside her house, signaling it was safer to return home to study. In school, she excelled, earning the admiration of many teachers and catching the eye of many boys. In contrast, despite cramming my head with all sorts of books, nothing stuck. On top of that, my face was covered in acne like a graveyard, so no ghost ever looked my way. When I played with her, I wasn't bullied. Because all our classmates respected her, they treated me kindly as well. Since she was close to me, I got to enjoy the perks. If anyone insulted me, they'd say, ugly as a ghost, yet playing with a beauty. Later, I played with her less, partly because of my own insecurities and partly because I was in 12th grade and needed to focus on graduating. Lynn passed her university entrance exam, while I only finished high school and stayed home to tend cows, wandering around the bamboo groves of the village. When she first went away to study, she would write letters to me, recounting her daily activities in the city. She boasted about having a handsome boyfriend from Hanoi. I was happy for her but felt sorry for my own bleak fate. After a while, her letters became less frequent. I thought she was too busy with her studies to reply to someone as unproductive and lowly as me. Gradually, the distance between us grew wider. Mr. Luke rushed over to my house frantically, borrowing money to go to the city. Lin father asked him why he was in such a hurry. He said the city police had urgently summoned him because of Lin. Lin father lent him the money from selling a cow that morning. Holding the bills in his hand, Mr. Luke thanked my father and hurried back home. That evening, when everyone returned from the fields, they saw a car with a cross sticker, honking loudly, driving into the village. Everyone had a gut feeling that something wasn't right. Someone said, maybe they're bringing Mr. Mupp back from Bark My Hospital. I heard that for the past few days, Mr. Mupp's grandchildren have been saying he's having a hard time with pneumonia. However, the car stopped right in front of Lynn's house, and her relatives rushed out crying bitterly. The villagers quickly gathered inside and outside the house. I went there and saw a large white coffin, wrapped with three white ribbons. On the lid were burning candles flickering. Some police officers handed Mr. Luke some documents to sign, then quickly got into the car with the cross sticker and drove away from the village. In my village, when someone dies outside, they are not brought into the house but placed outside for ceremonies. And if someone dies young, they are usually buried early. However, on the day Lynn died, it was an unlucky day, so her body had to be left until the next day. Late autumn brought chilly winds, accompanied by heavy nighttime rains, and the mournful sound of funeral horns echoed over the poor village. Most of the mourners at Lynn's funeral were elderly and women. Men and young adults usually work away from home and only return at the end of the year. The grave was dug deep, and the cemetery lay in the valley. The rain made the water seep in quickly, so they had to use a shovel to press down on the coffin lid before Lynn's coffin sank. After burying her, they covered it with a layer of sticky clay and then a layer of stones to prevent erosion. Everyone was shocked by Lynn's death, and amidst the confusion of the mourning family, no one asked about the cause of her death. Lynn's family only said she died because someone had harmed her, but since the police hadn't reached a conclusion, no one dared to assert anything. From the day Lynn died, people who went out at night often encountered a girl dressed in white, floating on the ground along the main road leading into the village. Rumors spread, making children wet their pants in fear, and many weak-hearted individuals dared not leave their homes at night. I woke up to see Lynn standing right beside my bed. She hugged me tightly, crying bitterly, Heen. I died tragically, Heen. They strangled me, searched my body all over. Only when I stopped breathing did they let go. But it's all because of me. Because I trusted that scoundrel too much. He said he would love me forever. He said he would marry me. But he used my body to please his friends for one night of fun. I won't forgive them. As Lynn was speaking to me, my black cat jumped in through the window, disappearing into the darkness of the night. Lynn body felt as cold as if leaning against a cold stone. I tried to call my mother, but all my efforts seemed in vain. I sank into a deep sleep, not knowing when. The next evening, Lynn returned. 
This time, she wore a red robe that she and I had bought at the market when we were in high school. She gently woke me up and led me along. She told me, your cat is scary. When we reached the intersection of our village, she took a swing from her bag and hung it on a banyan tree, telling me to sit down. As she swung me, she told me stories, if only back then I hadn't been so trusting. I'd still be alive now. But nowadays, many college students are reckless. They often go to motels together. After a few nights, they leave. Even I was assaulted by them. But I chose death over defilement. I am still a virgin ghost. After Lin finished speaking, she laughed heartily. She also instructed me, you're the eldest sister in this village, you must remind the younger ones. Nowadays, when they go to the city, those men will pounce on them right away. One day they'll bring diseases back to the village. When I returned to the entrance of the village, the sky was beginning to lighten. Lin mother saw my muddy feet and tangled hair and asked, what happened to you? I replied to my mother, I went back home after hanging out with Lin. Lin mother suspected I was possessed by evil spirits and took me to the temple to be exorcised. I knew Lin's hidden grievances, but I dared not tell anyone. After all, the stories she told me were just ghost tales to others. Even if I did speak out, no one would believe me, so I remained silent. Mr. Luke received a summons to the city court. The people of Bamboo Village were abuzz with talk about Lin's death. They came up with many theories. Some said Lin died from drugs. Others said she died from overworking the night shift. This time, when Mr. Luke returned to the village entrance, he greeted everyone, which surprised the people of Bamboo Village. Since his daughter's death, he rarely spoke to anyone. Mr. Luke hugged his wife tightly and cried, our daughter died a tragic death. She was strangled to death. Those two criminals are now in prison. This is the compensation money they paid for taking our daughter's life. But what use is this money when we no longer have our daughter? In the days that followed, the people of Bamboo Village felt sorry for Mr. Luke's daughter. Lin's grave was repaired and made more dignified. I went to the temple to pray with Lin mother. While waiting for her to get our fortune told, I went to the temple pond to admire the lotus flowers. Suddenly, a lotus bud bloomed before Lin eyes. Lin stood on the lotus leaf, smiling brightly at me, and said, Lin father sent me to the temple. The master assigned me to watch over this lotus garden. Do you see Lin grave blooming with many purple chrysanthemums? In the future, if any girls from our village pass the university entrance exam, you must pick a purple chrysanthemum from Lin grave to give to them. I will be with them to protect them. And you should repay your debts and get married too. People already gossip about you. Lin mother gently nudged Lin's shoulder to hurry back, and the lotus flower quickly closed. Since then, I haven't seen Lin anymore. I got married and had children. Every autumn, I go to her grave to trim the purple chrysanthemums, to lessen the desolation of her grave amidst the wilderness. The End Hopefully the content has brought you interesting and meaningful moments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Ghost Stories YouTube channel to follow the channel's next videos. See you in the next video. Have a good day.